In previous videos in this section, we talked about upsampling images and the concerns that go along with upsampling images. So before you crop an image, if it's an important one, you probably want to go back and view those, especially if you think you're going to end up with an image that has more pixels than when you started. Um, as always, work from a backup. Even though Photoshop can now crop an image without deleting pixels, if you straighten an image, you're still manipulating pixels, so it always makes sense to, to have a backup of the, the photos, uh, the images that you're working on. If you did some work on the image, then you may want to save out a uncropped uh, PSD version, so that would just be a matter of going File, Save As, and selecting PSD, Photoshop Document, as your version and then that way if you have layers that you want to uh, keep and uh, adjustments that you made and so on. Not that cropping makes that go away but the assumption in this series is that you're getting ready to crop to put on a website or, or something of that nature. And in case you need to make a quick copy right on the fly in Photoshop you can always go to image duplicate that'll produce another tab up here with another copy of your image. Um, I always suggest the very first thing you do in Photoshop before you start manipulating an image or making a commitment to use it is go up to image, image size. The first couple of edits or uh, crops that I'm going to show you it's not significant because you'll only be going down but as I show you other crop methods that you can use, I would just suggest anyway that you come in here, write down the width in pixels. In fact, right here, it always shows it right here. There's your width in pixels, your height in pixels. So I'm at 3,456 by 2,304. I'm going to write that down. But let's start with the most basic things that you can do with the crop tool. So the crop tool is located right here. I'm going to select it and if you have the opportunity if this is not grayed out like mine is then click it because what that'll do is if someone before you had typed some numbers in here gives you the opportunity to clear everything out. So since we haven't dialed in anything up here then we can just simply crop this image by just dragging in from what's already here we can also, when we first get into the crop tool, we can just simply, with the crop tool, just take and click and drag. That'll make a new area that we crop to. And let's just, as an example, say that this was the area that we wanted. To make the crop stick, we can just hit the return key, or we can double click inside the cropped area. If I now go to image, image size, you'll see we have a lot less pixels and basically all that we did there was got rid of everything from this area away. So as long as we were happy with the quality that we had before, there's no issue this way. I'm gonna Command Z or Edit and Undo Crop. Um, there is another way that you can crop in here um, that's not destructive as far as the pixels go. And if you uncheck this box right here, it actually leaves the pixel. So even though you make a crop and commit to it, I'll double click inside this time. So now technically this is cropped. If I save this out as a JPEG or something right now, this is the only area I would get. But if I save this file as a PSD file and went and worked back in here and, and realized I needed to make my crop area bigger, all I have to do is click on the crop tool again and I have my full image still sitting there at my disposal to go back to. Okay, so I'm gonna escape out of here because I don't want that crop. I may have to even edit, uh, let's see. Oh, well, actually file, revert, go back to the unsaved image before it was cropped. Um, most of the time, since we're making copies, we're gonna just delete the, the pixels. Um, that's up to you though, really, how you wanna work. Now I'm going to show you what I think is a very handy way to crop in here. And that's, uh, in this example I'll give you is let's say that we know that we want our image to be about 600 pixels wide in the web area. We don't care about the height. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to this little drop down and we're going to select with height resolution. So since I said I know that I want it to be 600 pixels wide, I'm going to type in 600 here, put PX after it to make that stay as pixels. And that's all I'm going to concern myself with. I'm not going to enter the height. Now I'm going to go ahead, do my crop of the image. And let's say this is the area I really like right here after making some adjustments. I'll double click in there to make the crop stick. And then if I go to image, image size, I can see that I have exactly 600 pixels wide. Say in a web area you needed something that was 600 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall. Then you can enter those numbers in exactly, make your crop, and what will happen is when you shrink the width or you shrink the height of your crop area, the other one will shrink proportionately to it. So is you can't go wrong. The only way you can really go wrong is if you kind of lose a little bit of common sense. So if you remember the pixel dimensions of this image were quite large. But if you went in super, super tiny like that and said, okay, yeah, I want to make that little minuscule crop there be 600 by 400, then you're going beyond the pixels that you had. In other words, you would actually be upsampling. But as long as we don't do anything crazy like that, so let's just go ahead and oh, lost this here. Put that back in. Okay, so if we made this crop here at 600 by 400, double click to take that, go to image, image size, we'll see that we have those numbers exactly. Now what if you did want to crop in real small on here and you wanted to, you know, rather than try and fail, you wanted to have a good idea whether you were exceeding the, the, the original amount of pixels that you started out with. I think the easiest way to show you this would first to do an example for print base work. So let's say that we wanted this image at 10 by 12 inches for print. So I'll type in 10 IN for inches, tab over, uh, what did I say? Well, let's just go 10 by 8 IN. And I won't fill in anything for the resolution so that that way I can make my crop and Go back, go ahead, crop it, go to image, image size, and I see what happens here is it crops, and since this is set to pixels from before, it's still in pixels, but if I change it to inches, we'll see that we got what we wanted, 10 by 8, but the resolution is 1088. So that's telling us right there that, nope, that crop that you made, you can't go 10 by 8. And since we were at the maximum height, we know that this image, we can't do 10 by 8. And we've talked about this in the other videos, how to check that. So our choice would be to go smaller or to, to accept the resolution, a resolution of 288 in this case. So let's pretend we made the choice that we definitely want... Um, the highest resolution we can get, but we found another spot in our magazine or whatever we're doing where we could use it as a seven by five image. So we'd come over here, we'd put seven in here, five in here, go ahead, make our crop, then we'll go to image, image size, and we can say, okay, we've got way more resolution than what we need. Then at this point, we could go ahead with resample checked change this to 300, let the computer, you know, resample the pixels and put it together as exactly 5 by 7 at 300 pixels per inch. But now let's take that example one step further and let's say we had a whole bunch of images that we wanted to crop at 5 by 7. Their original sizes were all roughly the same, about 34 by 20, uh, 3400 by 2300 pixels. What we could do instead is take this one step further, go uh, 7 by 5 by 300 pixels per inch for the resolution, make our crop, we go in here, check it, and change this over to inches, and we can see that we received exactly what we wanted with just one step. I'll revert back to the original image, and then 
let's see how you could tell if you wanted to go really in small here for web how big you could get it i'm going to lose kind of an use kind of an advanced little trick here It'll probably make more sense for me to show you why um, you have to use this trick if we assume again that we want a 400 by or 600 by 400 pixel area and we crop out a little tiny area with the tool hit return to make it take and we go to image image size it says that it's 600 by 400 but i know just based on working with images that there's no way that that started at 600 by 400 but it's that crazy resolution can be or uh, pixels can be used for resolution can also be used for measurement so what photoshop does is just gives us what we want it upsamples the image keeps the resolution at 72. so what we have to do is use a little trick here we have to say well i know that there's 72 points per inch so if i tell photoshop that i want to crop to a certain amount of points rather than pixels we can compare the two and don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you this is kind of an advanced way of thinking i mean again if you just kind of use common sense and, and don't hack the image down too small and then take a good look at it afterwards but let's just try this maybe it'll make sense to you so let's change 600 uh, pixels to points and 400 pixels to 400 points we won't put anything in for the resolution We'll make the crop area real tiny again. Go ahead and click return to keep that. And go image, image size. And what we can see is that we are down super low in pixels per inch. If we change this over to points, we can see that we got the amount of points we wanted, but at a ridiculously low resolution. So what you'd have to do is make sure that the area that you are going to crop is at least 72 pixels per inch when it's set to points if you're using the images at 1x. If you need the images to be 2x, in other words for high resolution monitors, then you would need a resolution of at least 144. So let me see if, if let's actually go through and, and, and look at something that would be acceptable. So once again we'll go back to before cropping we'll make just a little bit bigger crop see if that's acceptable we'll go up to image image size we're pretty darn close to the the 2x resolution right 144 so what we'd have to do is once again cancel out of there command z to back up and we'd have to just try it just a little bit bigger getting closer right so it'd be a matter of playing around back and forth and then once you knew what the area was what a really smart way to work might be to do is to actually drag out some guides so if you didn't have the rulers what you do is command R to bring out your rulers click inside the ruler drag out some guides and then you might have to position your guides a few times and but this way if you don't get it quite right you can always go back and then move the guides so here we are eh, close right but since i didn't have the guides before now i should be that much closer so then what i would do is say okay that's not going to get it quite there click on the guide move it over give that a try because the guide is further away now my crop area is going to be bigger then I go in here, double check again, and there. Now I have it. If I'm happy with that crop area, now what I could do is go back and change this to pixels because I know that that's acceptable. And then I made my, or actually I changed it to double the amount of pixels, right? Because we're, we're going 2x this time. Uh, but we know that once we crop it, that's going to stick and check the image size and there we go right on the money double the resolution that that we need so that would work on a 2x browser okay in the next videos we'll talk about adding to the outside of the image what's known as the canvas